Okay, guys, uh, we're here to talk about if we wanted to make a do-it-yourself or build our own flyboard air, not the one with water, but the one that flies in the air with jet propulsion, then how would we do that? And what type of things would we need to think about to make it workable? So I thought it'd be good to start by analyzing its counterpart, which is the flyboard uh, water version that I guess hooks up to a jet ski and lets you fly with water jets shooting out of it. So you can actually come to this uh, YouTube video here. Here's the title you could type in to find it. And here's even the name of the people or person that has the channel. So if you check this video out, you'll see that there's animations of the whole thing. Now also we can check out this here if we wanna learn about how the controller is um, used. It's called an EMK, wireless EMK. So if you enter these words at this guy's channel, <clears throat> you should be able to find that out. Now I did pull a couple clips out of this video just to take a quick look at, just to see what we can learn. So here we see that built into the side of the flyboard is springs to return to zero position. I'm not totally clear on what that's for, but maybe you'll find it useful. But apparently it gives some give, spring-loaded give, to allow you to have some shift in degrees forward and backward. Now here we could see in the water version, just like the gas version, you have the boots that are connected to the board, which I would certainly do that if I was building uh, the Flyboard Air, because you don't want to just stand on there with your own shoes and slip the heck off. You want the shoes to be connected onto the board and you would want a way for them to be quick released uh, in case the board starts going crazy on you and maybe you have a parachute on or something, I don't know. That way you can quick release out of the boots instead of being jet propelled into the ground or an object that can hurt you. While we're talking about that, let's take a quick look at a video. So here he is coming in for a landing um, <clears throat> I think uh, this is one of his earliest models of the flyboard. Uh, this was the model with five bottom thrusters, as you can see in the picture, and no thrusters or fans on the sides, which I think he came up with those a little later. Here we see he's slowly moving forward and hits the pole, which causes him to back up. So it bounces backward, causing the ECU to overcompensate with forward thrust, which as you see there, swings him forward. So it's kind of a pendulum, uh, pendulum movement that gets out of control, really just going back and forth. And uh, we say here that the problem is that he cannot compensate due to the bar being in the way. So apparently all of his safety features work out quite well when he is flying in the air because part of the computer controlled balancing system is his brain and his uh, ankles and feet and standing on the flyboard air because we humans have a balancing system within us to be able to stand up and to automatically, almost subconsciously, readjust ourselves if we're about to fall over. So this guy's taken advantage of that with his invention, which I think is quite smart. But that machine bumping into the pole that just changes everything because you cannot self-balance if you have an obstruction that doesn't allow you to balance yourself forward or backward. So that would just make the whole computer programming of the situation not work out in a situation like that. Let's look at some more pictures here. We mentioned uh, having the boots on there. Now in all of his products, he puts unsinkable foam, which uh, makes it to where if the thing drops in the water, it's not gonna to sink to the bottom. He also does that in his handheld device. And I think even with the jet powered non-water version, that it's a very smart idea to make it so it floats because most likely people who are gonna have some fun with the flyboard air jet version are gonna do it over water just for safety reasons until the technology gets really perfected. Now this is very interesting to see. It says adjustable tilt nozzle with both forward and backward orientation. So you can see the forward and backward orientation, how it goes back and forth. 
Now, this makes me think of some arguments I've heard online of how difficult it would be to use a JET system uh, and have an, the electronic control unit adjust the JET system to keep you in a horizontal, in your foot pad in a horizontal position. I've heard arguments that a JET cannot adjust quick enough to compensate for any fixing any quick tilt that may be problematic. But what I think they did on this is they actually use the angle of the jet where the jet comes down, this right here. By adjusting that angle, you actually adjust downward thrust. And I think that is the technique he used to hook the ECU up to create the automatic keeping everything level and doing it in a very, very quick manner rather than adjusting throttle, which would take maybe a second or two, which is way too long to adjust for quick little adjustments that need compensated for. That leads us to this video that I found by the same group. Now this guy's gonna rock this machine here side to side so that we can see these things, how they move and adjust according to that to keep the thing level. Let's take a look. So very cool. You can see that. You can see that when the machine tilts to the left, that, that is when this thruster moves the most perpendicular to the ground, which means you're gonna have more thrust, downward thrust, lifting you up. So that, that is how this thing is leveling itself. Every time it tilts left, we get more pointing directly down to push us back up. Every time it tilts right, you have the same thing happening. So we could see that that's what he is using on this particular machine here to keep very quick leveling rather than using any throttle adjustment, which would be too slow. Now here's a picture of that original version that, he, that caused him all the problems when he was landing on the boat. The original version did not have the side thruster that goes here. I'll show you that in a minute, what that is. Now here is his version with the smaller jets on the side. And this bottom part here, uh, I've seen in videos, can move backward and forward. Here's his other version where instead of the jets on the side, he added these electric ducted fans. On one video, I was able to get a close-up look at this. And it looks like it's the brand of this is JP70, JP70EDF which stands for electric ducted fan. I looked this up and these things have about five pounds of thrust each. Now you'd think five pounds may not be enough to do anything for uh, you know, a 200 pound man standing on top of this board. Um, but I think maybe that's not true. If you can picture yourself standing on a turntable and have someone push your left hip forward, it really wouldn't take that many pounds to spin you around. So maybe this five pounds of thrust would be enough. And why does he need these side fans or side turboprops? Well, as we see here, pulling the trigger creates thrust. But when I was watching one of his videos, I noticed he was turning the entire unit that he's holding to the right and to the left. And that was causing the bottom jet nozzles to move backward or forward. So basically anytime he wants to turn left, he'll just turn the entire control unit to the left and that will cause this thruster to point backwards, which helps the right side of his machine to make that leftward turn. As we know on anything that turns left or right, we want the left side of the machine to go slightly faster than the right side of the machine. So it was probably, it probably could work out without the side thrusters, but by adding those, he doesn't have to kind of jerk around the machine with his weight to make the turn. He can actually use that control unit to give him that extra thrust on his left side so he can make a right turn. And that does make some sense. But I think in the end, he did get rid of one turbo here. He probably had all five in when he had the electric turbo fans on the side. But I think his final iteration 
which I don't know for sure, but I think his final iteration was to get rid of one turbo in the middle and then add the turbos to the side. That way he doesn't only have forward and backward thrust potentials, but he also has the ability to adjust uh, on the left side and the right side that thrust amount for better balance. So as far as left and right balancing to keep the board horizontal when needed, these thrusters are less powerful, but they are also further away from the center. So further away from the center gives us a little more leverage, which means you need less power to uh, create more uh, upward thrust on the right or left side. So I think the jet, uh, smaller jets were smarter to switch over to. Now, I'm imagining that when he programs his ECU, electronic control unit, to keep this thing balanced, that he probably would just have this point out to the left to reduce downward thrust. And as we said before, by this thing can be adjusted instantly. And so you could have split second adjustments by adjusting which way this points, the bottom of this points, the nozzle points. So if this side's going too high, I could certainly see the ECU instantly pointing it outward to reduce downward thrust and create a more of a leveling situation. And then when he wants to make a turn, as we said, he twists the, he twists the uh, handhold unit, handheld unit, which would point this backwards so that this side would go forward faster than this side, allowing him to make some nice smooth turns. And here's another picture of uh, how we were talking about that he got rid of the middle thruster, the middle big thruster, uh, and used the two smaller thrusters. He found more use in that overall. Now, apparently he has uh, his fuel in his backpack right here, which it seems here is kerosene. I think I have seen older iterations where the fuel tanks are actually down on the, on the floor and that he has separate ones, um, one on each side. And maybe that would be smart <clears throat> to have two separate fuel lines. Uh, I would think if we have two separate fuel lines rather than just one, like what if for some reason this fuel line dis disattached? Uh, just thinking about that makes us understand that we may not want just one fuel line. Now, if we had two fuel lines, and let's say one fuel line gassed this corner and this corner, whereas the other fuel line gassed this corner and this corner, then if one fuel line went out, we may still have the ability to at least have enough thrust to lower us to the ground rather than crashing to the ground. So that's a reason I think two fuel lines, one that goes to these two corners, one that goes to these two corners. Now here in this picture, we learn that the foot pads right here is also the place where you can hide underneath it uh, batteries and electronics right in that space there. And he does share with us here that the nozzles on the bottom of the bigger jets also are directable. So not only on the side, not only are the side jets directable, but the bottom jets uh, are directable also. And knowing that, you know, we can clearly see how that would be another method for creating instant balance. If the, this side here is moving up when it, when it shouldn't be, if we just instantly directed these two thrusts outward this direction, that would be an instant reduce of thrust on, on, that, uh, on that left side as I'm viewing it right now. So here's some of my notes uh, that I wrote down trying to figure out how we can utilize, the, how we could build this ourselves, what we would need. So let's go ahead and just go through it. The drone-like algorithms change the angle of turbines. And that's to what we just talked about, changing the angle to reduce thrust on a left or right side or even forward or backward. Uh, from some of my studies, uh, I believe the Jet Pat, the Jet Cat P400RXG is the jets that he was using on the bottom of his unit. So those would be the large jets on the bottom of the unit. And this right here would be the electric uh, fans that he was using before. But I think we've been deciding we would go with the thrusters instead. And then in this highlighted part here, it says, so we have six systems working together, plus my brain and my legs. That's actually a quote from 
the inventor of the flyboard. So he's basically saying what I said a minute ago. We are using the algorithms that are built into the board, but we're also using the algorithms that are built evolutionarily into us humans. And by standing on top of the board is the only way that we can make use of those algorithms. And I think it really is quite genius to make use of our own built-in algorithms. Now let's talk about the importance of redundancies if we're gonna build our own units. We already talked about having two fuel lines would allow a sort of redundancy backup. So that's what I mean by redundancies. If one system fails, the redundancy backup allows for us to not crash and hurl toward the ground. So for example, if this jet were to fail, meaning we need more thrust on this side of the machine, then these two nozzles can instantly point away from each other. Let's say they point out this way, and this one points out this way. So they're pointing, one's pointing forward, one's pointing back. That instantly reduces the thrust on this side. And also I recall him mentioning that if this went out, these can, instead of this going backward to turn the machine in this direction, this could possibly point the other direction to get this side to spin around faster, which really is this side spinning around slower. Or this can point the other direction to create more thrust on one side. So that's a redundancy system, which is good. And we'd also want to program the thing so that if one of these jets goes out, perhaps if that were to occur, we would have this one stay pointing straight down at full speed. And remember, these things want to happen in milliseconds. So that's why you want to adjust the control nozzles before you adjust the throttle. So you could instantly have this stay straight down at full thrust, have this one point out sideways to re reduce thrust in order to compensate for this going out. Or even if we didn't have these on the side at all and we decided to go with four or five setup system, you guys will have to tell me down in the comments, well, how would you make up for this engine going out? We're just picking randomly an engine, right? So if we didn't have those, I don't know, like my instinct right now is saying, perhaps I'd keep this at full thrust pointing straight down, maybe have this instantly angle outward this direction so that the thrust force is pointing through the machine at an angle instead of through the machine this way, lifting this side up, perhaps it would be just more supportive of this other jet that went out. So maybe to have this one angle out instantly this way and maybe have this one angle out uh, this way. These are just guesses right now. I am not a technical engineer, but we would have to start somewhere with our idea, program it and see if it works out. So those are just initial thoughts. Uh, please tell me in the comments below what you think. How would you make the adjustments, uh, these redundant backups uh, or fail safes for if certain jets were to go out? Love to hear your opinion on that. Lucky, lucky. Comment. Subscribe now. Now, from everything I've seen after looking at all of his videos, it seems to me his most problematic moments are during takeoff and during landing. Because when you're in the air with this thing, everything remains pretty consistent and the leaning of your body controls this unit quite nicely. But when you're coming in for landing, well, things change because the closer you get to the bottom, the more the thrust dynamics change. That's one of the reasons you can see there's a grate here that he's landing on. He doesn't want to land on a solid surface because then the thrust anomalies created at this close range would make it difficult to land. So he's got holes in this. It's like a grate with holes in it, which helps that not to be as much of a problem. So this is something to think about. And uh, also during takeoff, I've seen the same thing. He uses this same unit for takeoff. Because once again, with the thrust having enough room to blow down here, it allows him to have that stabil a little more stability. Uh, I did see, as you guys may or may not know, this guy won the most recent um, world record for how far he could travel uh, with a hoverboard. But the previous guy who won it about a year earlier 
was actually creating a machine very similar to this. His name is, I think, uh, Alexander Duru. <clears throat> and I noticed one of the things he did on his machine, which his was all electronic, was he would fly down and hover to right about here off the ground, right about this level off the ground. And then he would just cut all electronics. As soon as he felt like he was in a very stable position, he would cut all electronics and let it drop to the ground. And so if you had legs that were maybe flexible or had some spring to them, then maybe that would be another technique for landing on the ground or taking off. But of course, the thrust of jets is a lot more powerful than electronic propellers. And they're also isolated in a smaller space. I mean, basically, it looks like the width of his shoulders. Whereas Alexander Duru, his uh, were spread out m much further. So he probably had a better chance of taking off from the ground and landing on the ground than you would with this type of a unit, um, you know, and needing to be super careful. So, and also how fast the fuel cuts off on these things. I don't know if you could just cut it off and drop that extra one foot to the ground. So these are things we'd want to definitely uh, address if we're making our own. So now I thought I'd show you a couple pictures of things I found uh, online. This thing is a drone that uh, is in creation at the moment. Uh, this particular drone, I guess, only carries about 40 pounds or something like that. But I did see very interestingly how the turbojet is actually horizontal. And then these things adjust uh, like backwards and forwards, I guess, uh, based on what's needed. Um, but uh, personally, I think I like the flyer concept better because anytime you have jet, when you have a curve like this, you do have a degree of wasted energy because the momentum that's meant to go this direction is now being interrupted and forced to go this direction. So that interrupted force is obviously going to cause some loss of thrust. But I just wanted to show this to you as a concept that uh, is out there being looked into. Here's a diagram I found. Um, I think I just entered jet quad to see what would come up. And uh, so here's another diagram. Maybe you could take a look at it, see if it's helpful to you. And then here's another <clears throat> diagram that I found. So maybe this could be used to build your own Zapata flyer. Here's another picture of the jet quad configuration, if that can help you a little bit. These do spin on the axis, as I mentioned. Here are some features that uh, they built into theirs. Auto hover mode, quick release boots, engine out capability. That means if one goes out, you're still okay. Triple redundant flight controls. So there's that redundancy, triple, very smart. Independent engine electronics. So that's interesting. Uh, so I think that's telling us maybe we would want two separate ECUs in case one ECU went out. Then the other ECU could make its own adjustments to keep you balanced in the air. And so we would have that ECU connected to perhaps opposite opponent, opposite components, as we mentioned before. Here's a really great image of the flyer. We could see he used mesh all over this so that air can flow in, yet at the same time, we are protected from the heat of the jetpacks, etc. He used the same type of mesh on the side jets we see. Now, myself, when I'm thinking about this, I'm wondering if we could use maybe not such small hold mesh like that. Um, I don't know, it feels like that may obstruct a little too much of the air intake. So maybe we could use something with a little bigger holes. I don't know, that's just a thought. Let me know what you think. Here's another great picture to examine. Here we can see the top of the jet, the top of the jets and how they're held into the machine. It looks to me like right here, there is no mesh. So that's interesting. As we said before, we got the trigger for thrust. And then we have the turning of the entire unit for yaw and turning. I do believe I heard him say that he used uh, ski boots because ski boots are attached to skis. So, you know, if worse come to worse, you buy an old pair of skis, maybe cut them off at the end and beginning of the shoe, bolt them onto the unit right here, and uh, you'd have some bolted on 
boots without having to create your own system of attaching boots to a unit. That could be a good idea. There's another cool picture. Now, one of the reasons that we find the turbine engines to be really great for this project is right here. Turbine, turbine engines have up to 10 times the power to weight ratio of other power sources. And that's really what we're looking for in a flight type of project is we want as light weight as possible with as much power output as possible. This is the whole reason why most people make their machines with lithium batteries because they have that high power output to weight ratio. Um, but uh, turbine engines have even more of that power to weight ratio. Now the problem is turbine engines are going to cost us <clears throat> about $12,000 each for the, each big engine. So if we're buying four of those, you're talking about $48,000 for four of those big jet engines that go at, underneath the flyer. And we see here that each engine produces about 90 pounds of thrust. So four of these engines would give us about 360 pounds of thrust. I think the machine itself probably only weighs about 50 pounds. So that leaves us with 310 pounds of thrust, which sounds like it can handle a 200 pound guy, maybe a backpack of fuel, but you're probably not gonna be taking a lot more things on a flight with you. So this would be just kind of an, really an entertainment project rather than something where we could pack up a bunch of stuff and travel to where we wanna go. So if you can't afford something like that, then maybe you go to the guy who had the previous record before the Jet Flyer beat his world record. His name is Alexandru Duru. That's how you would spell that. We'll take a quick look at his, what he was building and what he broke the original record with. So it looks like he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got eight. We got eight propellers. Originally he had put the propellers on the top but then later he switched them to the bottom, probably so his legs don't get injured if a propeller flies off. There's all his batteries he used. There's a close-up of one of the batteries, maybe to help you figure out which ones he used. It looks like he probably used a ski boot type of setup also. So he also has his boots firmly attached to his unit. And during his original creation, he actually made his own uh, accelerator using a pair of pliers pretty creative i guess that's his control unit here's a little close-up of one of his motors as you could see what i was saying was he put the propellers on the bottom originally he had the whole thing on the top and you could obviously see for safety reasons why you'd want those on the bottom so propellers don't hit your legs and you can see how he did his legs here probably slightly flexible i'm imagining there's another angle Nice little close-up of the motor and an ECU, I guess. Rotor or something like that is the name of that motor, looks like. If you get into this project, I definitely advise, uh, one time I saw him flying this and the left side, all the motors stopped working. And so he basically fell left uh, into the water. So if you were to do something like this, I would advise that if you're having uh, redundant ECUs, that you want to tie them to opposite props that can at least keep you, you may fall at a slow rate, but at least you won't tilt to the, fall to the left or right. So you would have one ECU controlling maybe two fans, on the left, two fans on that left, maybe the other ECU controlling these two fans and these closer two fans. That way if the outer two, outer four failed, you still have the ability to be level. Well, this is interesting. I just noticed that the idea that I was mentioning before about two separate fuel lines that he actually did may have implemented that at a later time. It looks to me like he did. There's two separate fuel lines. So uh, I guess he was thinking the same thing I was. Very cool. Lucky, lucky. Comment. Subscribe now.